Hydrocephalus is a condition characterized by excessive accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid within the brain ventricles, causing enlargement of the skull. This baby's large head is typical. The skin condition is not related to the hydrocephalus. Though hydrocephalus often develops during fetal life, it is seldom apparent until some weeks after birth. Then, the rapid increase in the size of the infant's head, the bulging fontanelles, and the widespread sutures make the diagnosis relatively simple. In the postnatal or acquired type, if the sutures and fontanelles are already closed, symptoms of intracranial pressure develop, but the size of the head remains normal. Usually the intellectual development of these patients is arrested in early infancy and they become severely retarded. The facial features of a hydrocephalic person appear small. The forehead is high and overhanging. The veins are distended. And the eyelids are elevated by tension of the scalp to expose the white of the eyes. Hydrocephalus is usually due to an obstruction in the normal circulation of the spinal fluid. However, it may also result from destruction of absorption areas or from oversecretion. Much of the brain structure and spinal fluid pathways can be examined by means of the pneumoencephalogram. This involves replacing some spinal fluid with air or gas and x-raying the head. The x-ray plates register the contrast between the air and brain tissue. Observe the dilation of the ventricles and the thinned out bones of the skull. The fluid is unable to pass into the absorption areas because the pathways are blocked. Hydrocephalics seldom live beyond childhood. If they do, as in this case, the accumulated fluid in the lateral ventricle causes pressure on the brain structures and thinning of the cortex. The result is widespread paralysis, deformity, and optic atrophy. This four-year-old child, helpless and severely retarded, again illustrates congenital hydrocephalus, the cause of which is obscure. Hydrocephalus developed following an attack of meningitis when she was three years old. Hydrocephalus may follow such diseases as encephalitis, and syphilis. It may also occur with spina bifida, meningocele's, and tumors of the brain. This final case, a severely retarded eight-year-old, once more presents a typical picture of severe congenital hydrocephalus with marked optic nerve degeneration, paralysis, and enlargement of the skull. Neurosurgical operations to correct hydrocephalus offer some hope of success if performed early in life when the destruction of brain tissue has been minimal.